What's up guys, Isaac here with Trails and Trucks with another build walk around today. I've got Dylan with his Ford Maverick at Mav Overland on Instagram. Dylan, thanks for joining me. Sure. Answer me this first question, why a Ford Maverick? Well, they're new, but most importantly, they're pretty cheap. You can get them for around $20,000. Um, so it is a great platform to like build stuff off of and like pretty budget build it as well. Um, you have a lot of money left over in the bank to buy like rooftop tents sure. and stuff, um, as opposed to buying a $50,000 truck. Right, how much was this one? This one was, I think 40, but it's got Everything that you can spec it as, it wasn't really my choice. You, it's the Mac Daddy. It is the Mac Daddy. Unfortunately, they're hard to get, so I didn't right. really have a choice. Right, otherwise so. you're waiting six months to order one or something. Right, well, you can't even order them right now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So you were really like stuck, like this is the one I have to get. It was like the only one in Denver. I called around to wow. maybe eight dealerships like every week to try and get one. So they're hot little they vehicles. Are, they are hot little vehicles. Wow, very cool. Well. Let's, let's jump into some of the mods, accessories, things you've done. Obviously very unique. There's not a whole lot of like Ford Maverick Overland off-road builds, builds to begin with out there. So maybe let's just start with the front end, the wheels, tires, suspension, and just kind of walk us through sure. what I you mean, did to begin. Most notably, it's, uh, it's lifted about two inches, um, as well as it has 245-70-17 tires. Okay. Um, so it sits about three inches higher than stock. Okay. Um, and it really helps with that break over angle since it's pretty low. Um, you factory. said it's lifted. It is lifted. So we've got a ready lift, um, front and rear. I didn't want to level it because I tow with it as well. Uh, so to maintain that, that front rake was important to me right. just so it levels out when I have stuff in the back, as well as like tent and all the gear, um, which I use it for a lot. So maybe you already said this, but what inch lift does this give you above stock? I believe it's a two inch lift. Okay. Um, so not like a mega lift, uh, but you don't really want it for a, an, an all wheel drive unibody like this. Right. So I'm, I'm just curious, I mean, you bought a Ford Maverick, so you knew it wasn't like all that high off the ground. Was, without speculating, what was the goal? And why did you decide to lift it rather than just throw all terrains on and sure. go that route? Yeah, I mean, I wanted something that maintained kind of the fuel efficiency and like practicality. And I was looking at like mid-size and full-size trucks. Um, and, they, and living in Denver, like in a metropolitan area, didn't really make sense. Uh, with this, I get like, 32 miles to the gallon lifted with the tent on. Really? Wow. On the highway. It, it, it's a little worse around town. Versus like a Tacoma, it's like you do like lift and tires, you're at like 12. Right. So I'm like, Dang. I'm kind of back to uh, maybe a stock Tacoma level sure, or something, sure. uh, but with a lot more functionality than like a stock Maverick. Sure. So I see you've got a couple of ditch lights and ditch light brackets here. Uh, does someone make those for the Ford Maverick or how did you land and, and come up with that? Yeah, setup? so those, I looked around for a long time and I didn't find anything uh, until I like looked on Etsy, weirdly okay. enough. So some sort of Maverick uh, owner passionate enough about yeah. ditch light brackets just made these little L brackets that, that bolt in kind of to the side of this like fender panel cool. um, as opposed to being attached to the hood. And what and lights? What lights are you running? These are just like an Amazon special. Okay. Um, they're, they're very like Baja S2 esque, yeah. Yeah. but uh, they work really well. I've got those hooked up to a, a Trigger Four Plus wireless controller. Is that in here? Yeah, so we can take a look at Sweet. that. Yeah, I feel like when you're going the Amazon lights route, you might as well go the Baja look. And I'm surprised. Like, I mean, you've had these for what a few months, and they're they're holding up. No condensation. Yeah, about six months now. Six months, wow. Um, and I've been impressed with, um, you know, the name of the game of this build is, is kind of like budget stuff. So right, rather than right. spending a couple hundred dollars on a pair of lights, it, it was like 30 bucks for the pair. So this is the, uh, the trigger controller. It's nice because it's wireless and Bluetooth. So you can turn on the lights and like flashing functions from your phone or from a switch controller. Kind of this uh, red dust, is this kind of how they come from the factory? Yeah, you can spec it in, it, it adds to the uh, MSRP a little bit, but no, this is from Moab. It's a, it's a byproduct of wheeling in some of that red <laughs> dust there. But this is 
the uh, switch controller that it comes with. It's, it's wireless, so you don't have to put anything through the firewall, and you can uh, turn on your ditch lights. And, oh, wow, very cool. And Raptor lights, because it's a very wide vehicle. Raptor lights, I didn't even see these. Yeah. <laughs> so you did go the full Raptor light. It is a Ford. It is a Ford. Yeah. It's a baby Raptor at this point. EcoBoost. So then you just got these wired in right underneath the hood and then right to your switch panel. Yep. Very cool. And this is clean. It did a good job with all this wiring. Yeah, thank you. It's yeah. uh, You know, for a DIY and like not having a ton of solutions for this vehicle, um, it looks real clean in here. So, I mean, as far as wiring goes, not as right, far not, as not a, Yeah, the dirt is it. Yeah, I would recommend thing. a quick uh, hose down. But. <laughs> So next, I want to run down the side before we get to the back, because the back, you got a ton going on, which is sick. So tell me a little bit about wheels, tires, and what you have going on yeah, right so, there. So these are the Firestone Destination XTs. I've okay. been pretty impressed with them, actually. Uh, you know, aired down to 15 PSI, and wow. they crawl up almost anything uh, that the truck can handle, really. Sick. Um, they're wrapped around KMC Bullies. These are 17-inch wheels. Okay. Um, about the smallest you can get with those rotors in the front. And did you have to go up a, like, is this a bigger tire size than factory? It's quite a bit bigger. I okay. think it's it's like an inch and a half bigger on the sidewall. I see you've got some, uh, some character building on the wheel. I do. I've got, I think, one of those on every single wheel. Scraping the curb when you're parking at the mall? Yeah, at the or? mall. <laughs> um, What's that from? I think uh, another uh, byproduct of Moab is okay. that some rocks get your rim sometimes. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Um, I mean, it, it tells me that you're actually using this stuff though, which is sick. Yeah, and that, that was part of the goal is to use it a lot and it's, yeah. it's budget friendly enough and I'm not, you know, getting eight miles to the gallon. Right, right. It makes it a little bit more attainable to just like go out during the weekend. So why? Firestones, why KMCs? I see that you didn't go with like an MT, but you also don't have like street all season tires on here. Why a, why an AT tire? Sure, I mean, this still is a daily. Um, so going like MTs and hearing like all the road noise yeah. that there is would be a little bit much for like an all wheel drive right. unibody vehicle. As well as like, I still like the capability to go off road or yeah. like on fire roads or, you know, doing fins and things and stuff was fine with these. Cool. Um, and the KMCs are just like readily available. You know, you can get them at Discount Tire. Right. Um, they look good. They've got pretty good brand recognition. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, they're both pretty well known in the off-road world, so cool. Enough about wheels and tires. Let's move on to the back. You got a lot going on, so walk us through bed rack, rooftop tent, accessories. Tell us all the things. Sure, so let's start with the uh, the bed rack. This is an extrusion overland uh, bed rack. It's made out of almost completely all aluminum extrusion, so you can okay. bolt anything anywhere. Um, so that's like what these lights are bolted to. I just drilled through the, the Pelican case. Uh, it's really like configurable. You can get it at pretty much any height, I think from like four inches all the way up to over the cab height. What is this at? This is at 11 inches. Okay. So I wanted enough room so that I could see out the back still. Wow, that makes sense. Um, so it's like about- the perfect amount there. Yeah, it's about as, as <laughs> low as I can go without like cool. infringing on the, on the right. rear view. Um, and I see it's fairly modular. You've got like gas cans, lights. Yep, we've got our little one gallon roto packs. Um, and I figure, you know, one gallon's enough since I get better fuel economy that it's probably around the same range that people get with like a two gallon on a Tacoma. Um, and oh, it fits the nice. bed rack pretty well. Got our first aid kit here. Um, you know, S2 style Amazon special yeah. lights as chase lights. Those yeah. are pretty important in the desert if you're in like silt or, or dust. Um, and you've been in Moab a bunch, so it mean, right. makes sense. They are a game changer. Right. Um, they're like bright enough that people can see you. So they're gr great for safety as well. Like if you're pulled over, cool. you know, if you have to change a tire, you can put them on like strobe mode. Oh, that's cool. Um, like a So like the safety thing too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, if you're ever on the side of the highway or something, right. turn them on, they are attention grabbers for sure. Well, I, I just want to point out, I love the thoughtfulness. When you just mentioned the one gallon roto packs, number one, it's a small truck. So small roto packs fits like, a whole whatever five gallon or two gallon setup would just look goofy. Right. And you're getting better gas mileage, so it's like this is actually comparable to what like a Tacoma or like an F-150 build or whatever, Tundra build, would run like, you know, bigger roto packs. Anyway, I think that's cool. Plus, it flows really well, looks good. I'm all about like that, you know, nice styling. So um, I feel like you killed it with that. So. Well, thank you. 
tent? Tent. The, uh, the monster on this rack is a, a CVT Mount Thielsen. Um, it's about the smallest hard shell, budget hard shell that I could get. Okay. Um, I, I like the look of a hard shell. I like kind of the maintenance of a hard shell. It's not a PVC cover. It doesn't like look like a sail when you're driving. Um, you can power wash it off. You yep. know. It, uh, it folds out and it sleeps about three people. Um, so it's, it's really nice for the girlfriend and the dog. You know, the, do the five pound dog is really big. So she needs her <laughs> the own five space. pound dog. Yeah, the, awesome. the chihuahua. Um, but I, I like the height of it as well. It's not like you're crawling up an 11 foot ladder. Right. It's like three or four ladder rungs. Right. So it makes it really usable. Yeah, I, I feel like it's nice that you can still fit three people or like two people and a dog, but it still fits within like the, the width of the vehicle. Yeah, it, cool. unfortunately there's not like a super skinny right. platform fold out tent, yep. but uh, it is about as aerodynamic as it gets. Yeah. So. And uh, I see that obviously you got the bed rack, the tent. How were you able to maintain this tunnel cover? Because I, I feel like whenever I see like pickups uh, with like a bed rack, you lose the tunnel cover function. And if I'm gonna have a pickup, I want the tunnel cover like for safety, camera gear, like you know the stuff that we're all doing. So how'd you maintain that? Sure. I mean, when I was looking around for a bed rack, there were very little bed racks that like maintained the tonic cover functionality. Sure. Um, and the ones that did usually made it into like, I think they call them like the retracts ones that yep. like roll yep. in. Um, and those are really pricey. Yep. So extrusion has these like wide brackets that work really well with the tonic covers. They're kind of oh, specifically okay. made for that. I did have to do a little bit of cutting um, of this aluminum here to make them work, but it seems like it seals pretty well. Uh, get very little water in it. Another benefit of uh, the extrusion rack and like the, co the configurability of the height is right. I can still roll it up fully um, without the like tonneau going into the top of the rack. So right, you have enough room in there to yep. be able to. That's cool. How long? Speaking of, I don't know, just the bed. How long is this pickup bed? I believe it's like four and a half feet. Okay, so you're not far off from like a mid-sized pickup. No, and that's the kind of like, the metric that I was looking at is like, can I fit a sheet of plywood? Right. And it's like, well, to fit a sheet of plywood fully, you have to get an eight foot bed, which is like a full size pickup. Of course. So it's like, well, you're already making sacrifices there. Right. Half a foot isn't gonna make that much difference. Right. Um, so that's, you know, for hauling mulch and plywood and two by fours yep. and stuff, it's fine. You know, if I go up to a 12 foot board, sure, right. it's a little So sketchy, with the tailgate but. down, how much do you have? I think it's almost seven feet. So you can fit like a piece of plywood back there. Yeah. That's sick. That's like my six foot bed Tacoma with the tailgate. It's like the same as this. Right. Because this tailgate clearly is taller. Right. Wow. Yeah, so it feels like, it doesn't feel goofy. It feels pretty secure. You right. know, you, there are tie downs on the, uh, the tailgate. So right. you have tie downs all the way throughout the bed, you know, yeah. six feet of it or so. so. So I, it's a truck, obviously, I know that, but can you tow with it? I see that you have this hitch mounted tire swing. So you obviously have a hitch. Sure, yeah. So this has the tow package, which okay. means it can tow um, up to 4,000 pounds. Okay, wow. So quite a bit for a little truck. I don't know if I'd want to go up to 4,000 pounds. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's probably heavier than the truck is. Especially uh, now with some of the bonds and stuff. Right, yeah. so <laughs> uh, I have a, like a DIY teardrop that I made utilizing the truck with cool. the plywood and everything. Um, exactly. <laughs> but uh, that weighs about 2,000 pounds. And as far as like acceleration and braking, it feels normal. I uh, don't feel like overpowered by the trailer by any means. Does this, it doesn't have trailer brakes, does it? It does have trailer brakes. I think it, it needs it because it's such a small truck. Right. But I mean, that in and of itself is unique. Right, because you don't get that on Tacoma. Right. I know I keep comparing this to a Tacoma, but like any, really any mid-sized vehicle, like throughout Ranger, Colorado, like the ones I've seen and driven don't have half of this like user ability, I guess. Right, it seems very like well thought out right. on the inside and outside really. Um, like if you're gonna make a small pickup, it's gonna be compact. You know, you're gonna kind of hit all the numbers. Right. And make it, you know, unique and cool and functional. So Dylan, you mentioned that you built your own like DIY teardrop. Seems like you tow a decent amount. Do you do anything like, do you have any like suspension support or anything so that you're not sagging? I mean, even this is heavy. Yeah, I mean, I, I run this as configured plus teardrop, so I right. probably have a good bit of weight back here. Um, so I do have like helper springs. Okay. Um, I'm running Timberin SES in the back. Okay. Um, and that really helps it like not sag. 
it's really noticeable if there's a bunch of weight in the back, the steering gets like super light um, because it is like such a small truck. Right. So having that makes a huge difference, like cornering and, and really for peace of mind. So tire swing, tell me about this thing. Yeah, so that's a, a rigged Megafit Ultra Swing. Um, rigged and Megafit, okay. So the reason why I had to do that is with the bigger tire size, fitting it underneath becomes a challenge. Right. People can cut out uh, like the metal brackets and stuff in there, but they're there for safety. So okay. like if you get rear-ended, they're like brackets that deflate the tire um, instead of sending the tire like into the right. cab. Um, so. I elected to mount the tire to the back, so then I have like full bed functionality as well. I don't have like a huge spare tire taking up the small bed. Right, exactly. Um, and there's functionality within the uh, the tire carrier as well. Pull that pin out. So you've got a a handle and a pin. There's a handle and a pin, okay. so it's it's kind of dual locked. And then we have this table um, that's got quite a bit of Moab. Is that dust how they come? It. Kind of with that. Yeah, you had to spec it like that. Oh, as well. nice! Look at that. Um, so you get the uh, the cutting board, and yeah. with the tailgate and that, it's uh, like. Can I open this? Yeah, really livable. Really like, you know, you can live wow. out of the back of your truck for multiple days, multiple weeks in a row. Yeah, heck yeah! And I like that it all clears well. Like it's nice that this swing arm opens up wide enough to where, you know, you kind of have some room. Like if you're using your tailgate, if you're using the table. It's not just all like right here. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you can sit on the tailgate and cook. <laughs> yeah. So right. it makes it really fun. Um, so question, not to jump around too much, but I see that on your bed rack you have these lights and I see your lights come down through here and they're mounted there. How did you run all of that? Sure. So that a work? cool thing about the Maverick is it comes with a 12 volt accessory and they just like give you an actual plug. Oh, wow. Um, so that I just drilled into this little compartment here <laughs> and I have that. bed lights up here and then chase lights back here. Um, Dude. And those I can also control with Bluetooth and stuff. They're wired up to a controller, but. So then do you still have to have a cord or like a wire go up to the battery? Or just no, wire so the, right in the wiring, wow. like the plug is just like right here. Um, so all I had to do is like drill a little hole for right. the switches and then like solder the plug into the switches and plug it in. Wow, very cool. So no like passing through the underneath of the vehicle or, or trying to pass it through the cab and then through the firewall. It's all right. just right there. And I see you have a like an OEM switch or like plug in here. Yeah, so I have 120 in the back as okay. well as like other bed lighting. Um, oh, okay. Just like touch stuff on e either side. And you installed those? That was like a factory option. Oh, these little lights? Yep. Oh, that's cool. So you like touch one and they come on both sides. Okay. But I do like the functionality of these. These are like rock lights. Oh, cool. Um, and they bolt directly into the aluminum extrusion. I didn't even see those. You tucked that up there really well. Yeah, so they, uh, there's like a little wire guide that you can just run the wires through the extrusion. So cool. it cleans it up really nicely. Very nice. And having the down lighting when there's like coolers and husky right. bins and stuff in here is really helpful. Cause usually that just blocks the side right. lighting. That's super neat. I was fully expecting uh, the mini Max Trax with the mini truck, but you went with the full length Max Trax. Have you had to use these yet? Not yet. Um, the all wheel drive system kind of figures itself out, but there's not a lot of articulation. Sure. Um, so <laughs> I will need to use these at some point. As far as like putting them on a vehicle, this would yeah. be the vehicle to put them on. Absolutely. Just because. Plus, they I mean they fit nice. Like they're out of the way. Right. They, they seem proportional. These two handles. Yeah. You've got them locked on there, so I mean they're not going anywhere. Right. A lot of this stuff is like locked on just because yeah. I live in Denver and street right. park it. Right. But as soon as I'm in the the mountains, they become unlocked. Wow. What? Uh, so I I I thought you had your your box where you did the wiring, but obviously you put your tent on. Yeah, so this is how I have configured now, but I have like a, a Pelican rifle case with uh, 60 watts of solar okay. and a, a portable battery that goes in that. And like in 15 minutes or so, the tent can come off. So when you pull the tent off, you put the Pelican on, yep. and you've got solar, you've got like outlets in there. I've got stuff. solar. Yeah, there's an outlet that I just plumbed into the side of the Pelican. Okay. So uh, yeah, being a videographer and a, and a drone pilot and yeah. stuff, having that be accessible and to run like Starlink, um, which is the satellite internet. You have Starlink? Yeah, I can just plug it into there. Are you kidding me? Um, and then like the setup is pretty dialed. You can cool. charge anything. You can, you know, 
stream if you want to from the right. desert or game, you know. You're just up in the CVT tent just gaming. Right. Super cool. I want to jump into the interior because you mentioned that this thing's loaded up. So I would imagine it's pretty nice inside. Yeah, it's, it's kind of unique as well. You got these like weird little door handles with functional hardware. So people have been pulling these off and like adding their own That's accessories cool. to it. Almost like Bronco-esque. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, Ford actually like provides files that you can 3D print. Oh, cool. Um, so if you wanted like additional cup holders or under seat storage like dividers, you know, people have been putting that in here uh, to maintain, you know, a clean look with, with all the stuff that they carry. Um, and it's kind of unique to the Maverick is like, you don't really see a fold up seat in a small vehicle right. like this. And there seems to be a ton of room. Like yeah, there's, there's a ton of room I can like, carry my fire extinguisher, like air down, air up tools, any other tools I need, uh, um, like a, a jump start or battery pack, and it all fits in there. So I don't have that like around the cabin of, yeah. or in my space at all. Um, so it really cleans it up. It's really nice to be able to access that just like right away um, by folding up the seat, as long as you don't have too much stuff in the back. Cool. Um, and then if we jump to the front, we see that the same styling is kind of throughout so are we in a Ford Maverick or are we in a F-150 Platinum? I mean, this is nice. Yeah, it really surprised me for, for being a Ford. You know, I came from Toyotas and, and my uh, college car was like a clapped out 2003 Volvo and it like seemed really nice. You know, all the leather, all the right. like heated seats and stuff for a, a budget car. But this is like the same level as that. I, I know mean, you got heated steering wheel, heated seats, dual climate control. Yep, it's the Mac Daddy. So we have, you know, uh, all our like different traction control modes and oh, hold cool. descent control and um, the uh, the auto brake hold, the, the drive-through mode. Yeah, um, very nice. Sunroof. Yeah, inspect with the sunroof, which I didn't want because I wanted like a rack to go there right. eventually, but um, that's kind of the name of the game in yep. this market. Yep. Um, B&O, sound system. Wow. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, this is an unbelievable interior. I'm like blown away. Like stitched leather. It's very know. comfortable for yeah. like long road trips. Cool. All right, so you just gave me a full walk around of the whole thing. Uh, a question for you is what are you gonna do next? I know that might be loaded, so maybe give me like the next three things you plan on doing. Sure, I think the main thing I wanna do is, is make a solar setup similar to the one in the Pelican and okay. just have it on top of the tent. Um, whether that's like bungeed or I glue it or something, having that be accessible and uh, you know use it in the same way that I do the Pelican would be right. awesome. That makes sense. Um, I am working on right now like a a little camp sink, uh, okay. similar to the Dometic, yeah, yeah. like the Dometic Go, but for a third the price. Yeah, cool. Um, so I think that'll be nice for when I'm tent camping instead of bringing the the teardrop. Right. Super cool. Number three, if it were me, I'm I'm dying to know. Uh, are you gonna do a roof rack? I don't even know if anybody makes one, but if they do, or if someone comes out with one, would you consider some sort of platform rack or crossbars or I don't know? I would love to do a roof rack. If not, just because of like solar, yeah. I could just fill the whole roof with solar. Oh. And solar is pretty cool. Like right. you just leave it there and right. you get power. Um, or like just having the extra functionality of being yeah. able to you know, mount anything there. Maybe the Pelican runs in conjunction with the tent. Sure. Um, but I have that yet to cool. see if anyone makes anything. I would yeah. love to put one up there though. Cool, good to know. Yeah. Last but not least, where are you headed next in this thing? I would love to do some more wheeling just around like the Denver area. I did a lot of Moab, um, a bunch of like stuff in Colorado Springs, but I haven't really explored like the mountains close to here. Um, so camping and stuff like 45 minutes away would be great. Um, yeah. instead of driving six and a half hours right. instead of my lab. Uh, well, cool. Yeah. Sweet, man. Well, thanks so much for yeah, joining hey, me you. today. Appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to go follow at Map Overland on Instagram, and we'll catch you guys next time.